December 31st, 2023. Guys, Happy New Year's Eve. It's going to be a long night with fireworks and pets whining and trying to jump fences and run all night trying to escape it and having uh, pretty much a fear factor. But maybe some people will have listened the last few years as we talked about it and will be a little more careful. They're very sensitive. Dogs have such a tremendous uh, higher range of hearing than we do. Imagine how loud those concussions sound to them, and no wonder they're scared, right? Have a soul, have a heart. Think about that. But the sun is welcoming in 2024 with the strongest flare in years. This is the next five, guys. If it had been earth-facing, and that means it would be turning, it would be coming closer this way, and that's what it's going to be doing. If it had been earth-facing, this X5 would have been much stronger because the satellites pick up that direct energy, and this is a kind of a side impact. Still, they picked up this as an X5. As it moves in this direction over the next few days, it's going to be coming more and more earth-facing. This was a very powerful sunspot when it went behind the sun. As a matter of fact, I saw a, a video a few days ago they said was from, I think, the Mars rover or one of those rovers there. And it was looking at the sun from the uh, perspective of Mars, which was on the back side. It was showing this flare from Mars, I mean, excuse me, the sunspot from Mars because it was so large. Now, we're going to be dealing with it for about two weeks as it crosses across the sun. Usually it'll take it about 27 days or so for one sunspot to make the full rotation. But guys, this is going to be something we're going to have to watch. Now, here's the blackout areas in red. Notice this is the California coast right there going up the uh, west coast of U.S. And you guys in California, the weather's crazy, the jet stream is crazy, and the waves are crazy. And they're going to continue like that for the next few days. But this is saying it was uh, a proton, basically, a background with a strong X-ray flux. But communications were pretty much lost in the upper atmosphere here. Now let's look at the SDO satellite and as it happened, check this out. We'll let it play forward. You can see it building there. Very powerful flare, very fast. Let me slow this down. That sunspot again, the one that was seen from the Mars rover right there starting. There was a small flare there. Again, far left corner. Right there, look at that. It was a long lived flare, too. Look at that. Very high impact. Again, if uh, we get a CME from this angle, more than likely it will be uh, out to the left. We're going to check that and just see what they're uh, trying to model. Now, here's where they measured this x ray flux. And it, this is in watts and meter cubed. But right here, guys, this is the X line right there. And so you can see both uh, the GOS 18 and the uh, 18 long and short. Pick this up and right there. It looks like it's a little stronger than a 5. But, guys, you when you get up into this area, you've got some problems, especially with an earth-facing flare situation setting up like this. We're going to have to be very careful. Now, Solar ham is not showing any CME tracking at this point. We'll see if that uh, gets updated, but it says this is the strongest flare of solar cycle 25 so far. The most powerful eruption the sun has produced since the great storms of September 2017. Radiation from the flare has caused a deep shortwave radio blackout over the Pacific Ocean. Ham radio operators may notice a loss of signal at all frequencies below 30 megahertz, for more than 60 minutes after the flare's peak. It's too soon to know for sure, but this explosion probably launched a coronal mass ejection or CME into space. Because the blast site is located near the extreme est uh, eastern edge of the sun, the CME is unlikely to have a significant Earth-directed component. But stay tuned. But guys, again, it's rotating our way. Another thing that I think is important, and we were talking about it in the last couple of videos showing the jet stream, and that uh, they're saying sudden stratospheric warming. During the week before Christmas, a near record cold wave hit the Arctic stratosphere. Temperatures as low as 75 degrees, minus 75 degrees centigrade, created aurora-like polar stratospheric clouds seen as far south as Italy. 
Now the opposite is happening. Suddenly the Arctic stratosphere is warming. Now this is what they're talking about. Suddenly everything's starting to warm up. The week before Christmas, we were getting, it was getting very cold. Now it's starting to climb out of that. And we're seeing a major shift in the jet streams. And that may have an effect even on the uh, huge waves coming into California. And we talked about that. Uh, folks in Canada and up north are talking about this and no snow and everything like that. But may, that may be about to change. But NASA satellite data show the stratospheric temperature rapidly spiking with an above normal temperature expected in the next few days. Guys, that is exactly what people are talking about. Way too warm. This is called a sudden stratospheric warning or SSW event. When the stratosphere warms in this way, it, it is a sign that the polar vortex is weakening. And when I show it to you, you're going to see that it's split in half it's, and might even change directions. That cold air bottled up in the Arctic can suddenly break free and spill down to the lower latitudes. The famous beast from the east cold wave that hit the UK in 2018 was caused by one of these uh, sudden stratospheric warming events. And guys, the... Things are warming now, but it's about to change because that jet stream is going to stop rotating in this normal way that we were watching and start moving more in a north and south pattern, uh, pushing this cold air south. Let's take a look at that. Now, it's still well above the U.S. and most of Canada. Check this out, guys. You've got some smaller vortices here, but it, this thing is broken in half. Now, half of it is uh, over the Pacific Ocean. This is Kamchatka, Russia. This is the Alaskan Lucian, uh, Lucian Islands here, again, the West Coast. But look at that. Now, when we look, again, we're going to go and look at the North Pole, but from even here, as we move in, you can see that there's disturbances in it, and it's located right here. Now, if this thing changes direction and gets above, uh, gets away from being right above the North Pole, the physical North Pole, where we're seeing the anomaly, some of this glow is going to go down. Look, again, we're talking about, or people are talking about their idea of what's going on, like a toroidal uh, vortex that's being created by the rotation of liquid metals inside the Earth, and that's what we're seeing. Uh, it's a good guess. It's probably better than any I have, other than I just want to make sure that we understand we're not looking at magnetic lines of force here. This is the center. This is the glow that's out in front of it, just like a, um, the atmosphere inside of our magnetopause that glows when the, we get extreme solar wind. In this case, we're dealing uh, with uh, about 80,000 feet and extremely high winds. But it, right now, the reason I think it's glowing is mostly is because it's in this very fast jet stream. But we're dealing with wind, not magnetic lines of force at this point. So what is causing this? I mean, so okay, so we've got a, what if we got an opening north south pole? We got magnetic lines of force pushing up through there. What kind of density is it creating that would cause this? Now I'm going to go back down to about sixty thousand feet here, just like we did before. You can see it at that altitude; it's starting to cool off just a little bit. We just I'm going to keep dropping here completely different direction let me back out and kind of give you an idea of all the vortices involved at this level but re regardless of what you see here that spot right here has remained there for at least um, since last March when I first noticed it but as you get down we're going to go to the surface level here a different direction there so what is causing this what is this blue signature here? Is it, why is it there? Why are we seeing what we're seeing? Again, this is wind being affected. Going from there all the way back to the very canopy that this model represents into our jet stream. Now, if I back down the height, I just want to look where we're getting these giant waves, guys. Very unusual looking to me. In California here's surface level you, you've got this storm here and then they're talking about a couple more may be headed your way you may get a break for a day or two but those high waves guys are creating tsunami like situations there 
along Southern California. Now, that's at surface levels. It would go up a little bit in altitude. You still got that, but you're starting to see some patterns in here. And these are going to be critical, guys, I think, coming across the U.S. in the next few weeks, next few days. This coming week, here in the south, we're going to see Wednesday highs in the 40s with rain for three days and freezing temps at night. Guys, are you prepared for that? If we could have some storms because of all the rain pattern that's setting up. And so if you lose power, do you have dry firewood? If you don't get some, if you've got some stacked outside, put some on the porch and keep it dry because no matter what type of other heat you have, when all goes wrong, that wood burner will save your life. Now, let's just kind of go up in uh, altitude here as far as the uh, pressure. You can still see Southern California, even here at the upper elevations, is getting uh, that incoming pattern causing the waves. We're going to continue to rise. It just gets faster as we do that. Now, again, if you can't see it, this is Southern California right here. You're getting this is the, We're getting into the jet stream now, all, not all the way to the top, but we're getting there. Back it out a little, and look how kind of chaotic things are. We are not at the top of this. We're around 40,000 feet here. We're going to go up to 60, then again, about 85 or 84,000. Now, this is next to the top. We're at about 60,000 feet, and you can see what we've been seeing, except it's a little different. It's pushed just a little further north. And the, again, the reason we're seeing the glow, I think, uh, in front of this object, just like a magnetopause on the planet, is because it's being hit by very high upper-level winds. Now, let me back up just a moment. Let's look at California and go all the way to the top. You're still getting this flow here, this El Nino pattern, I guess you may call it. And all of this is going to bring that rain and cold air but let's move to the top. That's what we're dealing with now. One instead of two, I mean two instead of one. As this thing breaks apart, get it uh, here in the, over the U.S., this area here is going to start pumping very cold air straight down. And if it moves this section of the jet stream down, it's going to make it that much worse. But there's a lot we're watching, guys. I just wanted to touch base with you tonight. I uh, hope everyone has a safe and happy New Year's Eve and New Year's Day. We'll be talking to, with you soon. It's a heads up. Be safe.